Welcome to another edition of Through My Lens. I'm your host, Karen Jackson. And Through Our Lens is a podcast, a 15-minute perspective of purposeful and powerful living strategies. And I interview and feature individuals who have not left their setbacks, circumstances, or their challenges define who they are and what they can accomplish. And today we have a special guest. We have author, motivational speaker, educator, dancer, Darlene West. And we thank her so much for participating on this podcast. How are you, Miss Darlene? I am doing well, Karen. How are you? I am wonderful. I just had a technical glitch. So uh, just give me a second. I'm about to bring you on the screen. There you are. There you okay. are. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing quite well, Miss Karen. How are you? I am wonderful. I am wonderful. So I am excited to talk about our topic. Um, it is one that is very close to my heart, and it's about being a leader. And we're talking about leadership that transforms and empowers. And so I am excited to have you to talk about a little bit about your journey and your visions and strategies of leadership and what has made you successful uh, throughout your journey. So I wanted to ask you, first of all, what does leadership mean to you? Leadership means to me is the responsibility of leading someone or a group of people to whatever purpose that is set before you. It could be your pastor, it could be your boss, it could be a organization you have created or organization you work with. If they place you in leadership, they expect you to do the things necessary to lead the group or people forward. All right. So tell me, um, what made you a good leader? What made me a good leader is I had to learn how to listen. I had to learn how to be still and not be so anxious to accomplish some things. I had to learn how to deal with people. And the greatest thing I had to do is learn how to deal with myself with all of my strengths and all of my weaknesses and dealing with anything that would come before me that had to do with what I was leading and where I was leading at that time. So tell me, so tell me um, a little bit about your journey. When would you say that, I know, we're going to be talking about your your new book that you have coming up. But I just wanted to ask you, just from your own individual perspective, um, I heard you mention listening as an important um, quality of, of a good leader. But I also wanted to ask, how would you, what are three words you would use to describe a great leader? Three words I would describe as a great leader. Like I said, one is listening. Two is being able to admit that when you're you're wrong or maybe I need to do something different, apologizing and learning how to forgive. The other is being humble. Wow. That those qualities are um, actually it's interesting that you mentioned some of those qualities because um, I just read a recent uh, white paper by the uh, Dale Carnegie Institute, and they talked about some qualities of a good leader and how to really engage your team. And they mentioned about valuing um, your, your team, valuing the people that you lead and helping them be confident and connected and empowered. And so listening and being humble seems to be the qualities that fit right in line with that. I wanted to switch a little bit. Um, in your book, you talk about 
um, being called to leadership in August of 1997 um, when your pastor asked you to be a children's church ministry leader. Uh, tell us, how did you feel about that? Was that something you just immediately embraced? I know for myself, um, I used to always be the type of person that I would rather be in the background helping out <laughs> and not necessarily in the forefront. But, mm -hmm. you know, God always has a whole nother plan, right? <laughs> so, yes, he does. So tell me about your experience. Were you excited to be uh, asked to be in this role? I was excited, extremely excited to be in the role. When I finally sit down and thought about it, I became, a, I became uneasy. I became nervous because then I thought about the big scope of the whole thing of being that type of a leader. Um, I was going to be responsible for educating and teaching God's word. That's just not saying, okay, I got a Bible. I can read this. No, it, it, it takes strategy. It takes planning. It takes, you know, working it out. So you can be able to present his word. It's not like, uh, a school book or a book you would just read. These have principles and promises in, in it and directions. And not only are you teaching it, but you got to live it yourself. So you'll be able to teach it. So yes, at first I was excited. Then I all of a sudden I became real nervous. Then God had to calm my spirit and let me know, I called you. So that means I'm going to be with you. So you didn't even have to worry. But all of those things, I feel you have to learn. That's not sometimes an easy concept to accept because we are people like when we know something, oh, let's get it done now. I don't need no help. No, no, no. I just need you to stand over here and I'm going I'm to handle it. But God doesn't work like that. He doesn't want me to handle it. He wants me to be led by him so he can handle it. So that was my journey, plus so much more in learning that. And, you know, one of the things you just mentioned that I think is so important is um, not just being a good listener, but also how to deal with fear in leadership because it doesn't mean because you're a leader that you you know you don't have those uncertain times about how best to lead and and also looking at that from how best to lead your team and to be able to show vulnerability of fear how did you handle that and how did you work with your team to help them understand that as one of my mentors says do it afraid how did I help them to understand? Well, most of the people that came to the team, they were they were Christians. And so everybody was everybody understood that you always are going to be growing. And so my concept and my statement to them always, we're always in a state of growing, always in a state of moving forward. And if anything occurred in that time frame that maybe wasn't positive, showed a weakness. I was never too afraid to admit that I was either wrong or we could have did something better. I took that responsibility because I was the lead. And I and I didn't try to push that blame or anything off for anybody else. I would take that wholeheartedly, learn from it, and move forward. Try not to, you know, live in regret. I think that's so important because if you if you look at uh, some of the lessons from some of the top businesses and and uh, and business individuals, professionals, I um, mean, even church leaders, um, you know, we have to be able to say that we don't have all the answers, and we have to be willing to to have that vulnerability and that mm -hmm. transparency uh, with our the people that we lead um, mm -hmm. because that's how you continue to develop your leaders. If you, to me, if you're not um, teaching them the lessons that you've learned and developing them to become great leaders, 
then you might be missing the mark a little bit. What do you think about that? <laughs> yes, because you have to have that passion for them. Excuse me. And the fact that you want to help them to grow. It's not really about you. You were just chosen at that time to handle a particular task and to lead it. But wholeheartedly, you're always trying to push your team forward to learn, to grow, and to come out of their shell, and to use all of their gifts and talents as well. So that means you got to learn how to delegate. Let it go. I give this assignment and this is how I'd like for it to be. Do you, will you do it? And so if the person says yes, then I leave it alone. I don't micromanage. I don't. So those things I learn and I strive even, even in now with being in COVID, we're not open, but still mm -hmm. when we reopen, my concept will still be the same. I'll turn it over to you. If I ask you something, I'm turning it over to you. I'm not going to micromanage it. Now, if you can't handle it or whatever, let me know. But outside of that, I try to push them to that next level. And, you know, I thought what was also interesting uh, in your comments, you talked about how you learn more about yourself and how you um, had a spiritual transformation in your uh, journey in leadership. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, as I was beginning to lead, I began to understand that God was working through me. I wasn't working for God, but he was working through me and developing other gifts and talents that he had already given me. He enhanced those. Plus, he started giving me more because I surrendered and was listening following instructions, not trying to do things my way, but always striving to do it the way that he laid it out for me to do. So that with that came my transformation. And talk to me a little bit about your book. Your book is called Transformation. Uh, let me get the, get the title right. It is <laughs> Transform moving into divine purpose. Talk yes. to us a little bit about uh, your book that's coming out in December next month, right? Yes. And talk well, to us about why you wrote this book. I wrote the book because I had other members on my team that said, Miss Sterling, you do so many marvelous things with the ministry. Why don't you start writing everything down? And I was like, oh, okay. So that's been a journey of writing everything down that I did, starting from the time um, that pastor asked me all the way to it. it I didn't all the way to kind of like now I have been just writing, 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 writing. And in the, in the midst of that, it, it had where I started the things I learned being in the middle, the things that had to be cut out of, out of me with all with different situations and circumstances, and then moving into a point of understanding my purpose. And once I understood my purpose, then I understood who was leading me through the purpose and that it was his purpose and not my purpose. So once I once I understood that, it just made everything easier and it just made it exciting because I became less stressful. I became less less anxious and more at ease in leading than I than I had before in the past when I first started. Wow, that sounds awesome. And talk to us. Um, I think you said it was interesting you said that um, how your team encouraged you to write the book and vice, you know, that's pretty interesting that they inspired you, which me and, you know, I, I heard the thing, uh, this, this quote that says, you can't be a leader unless you have followers. And so to me, I think that speaks to your inspiration 
and speaks to your leadership that they were inspiring you to write your vision and make it plain. Yes. And in the person that uh, helped me in that journey, he's now writing. So it's just fascinating how God just uses everybody. And I had another friend on the team before I even got to this point. She took all of my notes and wrote them out and put them in a book form so I could see it. So I always had people around me encouraging. They were just so excited that they did a lot. I was writing, but they did a whole lot of other things to encourage me to get to this point. So that is fabulous. That's good to have. That lets you know that people love you and they care about you when they take that on and do it for you. Absolutely. And I think it also speaks to another important uh, characteristics of a good leader because um, you can't do it by yourself. Mm -mm. You need a team, you need a support system. And I think you mentioned that a little bit earlier when you talked about being able to delegate. That's mm -hmm. so important because sometimes I know I've been guilty of it is that you want it done a certain way, but you have to trust your team and the people that are working with you that they they have the vision. They know exactly what it is um, that th that we're trying to accomplish. And they're all in it just like you are. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then that gives them the opportunity to use their gifts and talents as well. So we as a leader, you have to realize what your team is made out of. We, what each individual's gift and talent is. That's taking your time to study your team. Not to say I have a team, but I'm studying my team. I know my team that I have now, I know them when they don't feel good, when they're irritated, uh, just whatever is going on, I can sense that. Well, that's a gift God blessed me with to help me to know how to lead at different times. It's not always a straight cross the board. You have to know how to give and take. Sometimes even go like, mm, that's not a good thing to say right now. I'm going to wait on that. Mm -hmm. You get you know what I'm saying? So with that, I, I learned that and that's the most exciting part about it is knowing the different things that you have learned and being able to discern it. Mm -hmm. That is so important. Too. And, you know, one of the things that um, I heard you just talk about um, and and you mentioned it a little bit in your book is you explore the whole thing about as you were being led to and being called into this um, leadership position that God worked out all the difficult. He used some of the difficult uh, circumstances that you went through to help define who you are professionally and also as a leader. What would yes. you say be your uh, number one lesson that you learned about yourself? My number one lesson that I learned about myself is being overconfident. I know I have gifts and talents to do different things, but sometimes you can become overconfident in what you're mm -hmm. doing and then not allowing, you block that spirit because that's a spirit. And so you blocking out God's directions and leading because I know how to do it. So you ain't got to tell me, God, I already know how to do it. And he's, he's trying to direct you and lead you in a different way for his purpose, not my purpose, but for his. And so that is one of the most strongest things I learned about myself as being overconfident. So he had to teach me how to be humble and listen and follow. Humble, listen, and follow. Wow. I don't know where you are. Humble, listen, follow. Whatever group you're in, whatever 500 fortune companies, you still have to be humble. You have to be listening and you got to be able to follow. Wow. 
that's a powerful that's a powerful story and you know it's interesting when you said about being overconfident because you know we work hard to learn our craft to know that um the things that we need to do to be successful continue to be a lifelong learner but i think like you said it's so important to not be so overconfident and um and allow god i always say i'm, I'm a true planner but I always want to leave enough room for God to come in and, and, and do what he needs to do, not what I think should be done, but mm -hmm. what he needs to do. And I think that speaks to the whole thing about confidence. As one of my mentors say, it's confidence. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. that, that's mixed with that humbleness that you're, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then also, like you said, being um, also allowing other people uh, their talents and their their gifts to shine. I think it just makes you a better leader. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. You're not afraid. See, sometimes I think um, when people have gifts and talents, they, and it might be stronger than yours, you get afraid. It's like, well, I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. And you try, to, you try to downplay them, and you can't. You can't. So what? Instead of trying to downplay, it, girl, you home in on it. Okay, can you do da 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 da? This is what I need. They'll take off. They will just take off and do an excellent job. Now there are some people who want to do the backstabbing thing. It's okay. You learn how to deal with that as well, because that's part of human behavior, and, and it's not going to go away. So you learn how to deal with all of that. So when you are delegating, you think about it, it's like, hmm, if I give them this or that, they're going to take it and do da 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 opposite of what I want. Well, I can't give that to them. So you have to choose the right person that has the gifts and talents that can bring this to the forefront as well. That still is discernment and knowing your team. You've got to know the condition and the heart and the mindset of your team members, period. You have to. That's the only way you can successfully delegate and get along and know how to lead them. That's a, that's a key point. They're not gonna be laying around like a little puppy on a thing, on a chain. But they will lead if you respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Respect them. And they will, in return, nine times out of ten, will respect you. And um, what you just said speaks to that that recent uh, white paper that I talked about um, from Dale Carnegie Institute. It talks about when people are feeling empowered and feeling confident and feeling valued that you value their contribution mm -hmm. um, that they, and they're more engaged and they're yeah. more apt to stick with you through the good and the bad, because right. as we know with, with COVID, that's going to come whether we yeah. want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't believe we're almost out of time. So okay. I, what I want to do is I want you to explain your a book. Again, your book is called, which is your second book. Okay. Tell us about yes. your first book. Before we, we well, my wrap first up. book was a collaboration with 27 other fabulous women and their stories of their journey. And mine was called Shapening. So I explained a journey I went through when I lost everything in my home. Wow. And I didn't have only thing when I came back to look at it was a fire. So when I came back to my home, I'm standing in somebody else's underwear and clothing, lost wow. everything. Wow. So well, that was a journey that I talked about. Well, everybody in that book had a journey, had a fabulous journey. So it just made it so interesting. It's like whatever you were going through seemed like you could find it in that book because you had 27 other people telling their stories. So mine was one. You can relate with that. And then you have everybody else's. It was just completely an awesome opportunity 
to with all these other authors. So where can they find that book if they're interested in? On Amazon, it's on Amazon, and it is Finding Your Voice. And it was produced by Linda Eastman, Professional Women International. And you can go to her website as well. And this, all these other, that book, plus all these other fabulous artists and, and authors that she has helped propel their career in writing as being an author. Wonderful, wonderful. So your new book is called Transform, Moving Into Divine Purpose. And tell my listeners, why should people go and pick up your book? And where can they find your book? Will you, how will they be able to find out when it's actually hitting the, the stands? Well, right now, it, I know it's going to be on Amazon. Miss, uh, I'm under uh, Professional Women International. I got to receive the scholarship through them. So they're handling a lot of my details at this point. And so you can go on Amazon and plus her website. But it still won't be available before December. So right now, you would if you went, you wouldn't see it. Okay, but okay. how can they stay in contact with you and follow you? Well, I am on Facebook, and you can follow my page. I'll have more uh, things on my page for people to see. Um, Okay. Okay. I see that you're a little nervous about promoting yourself. Okay. But that's okay. You know, that's why you're a client of mine because we're going to make sure that everyone knows when your book hits. So you can can follow Miss Darlene. You can follow me through my lens. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Embrace your communication power. So, Ms. Darlene, I really, really appreciate you taking your time. Is there any final comments or anything you would, inspiration you would like to leave our audience today? One thing I would like to leave is through your story, you are a great leader because it has not destroyed you, but it's made you strong for somebody else's life. Wow. Awesome. You must know I need to hear that. (laughs) So, Ms. Darlene, thank you so much for tuning in and participating in another edition of Through My Lens. As I said, we will keep our audience informed about when they can get that book, Transform. Um, Let me get it right again. Transform, Moving Into Divine Purpose. Thank you so much. God bless. Continued success. And thanks for inspiring us all to just keep dreaming, keep moving, and writing our vision and making it plain. I I, I took that for today. I think that was something God really wanted me to hear, and especially from you. So thank you so much for participating. All right. Take care. And until next time, you too. Until next time. Stay empowered, inspired, blessed, and keep rising and shining. Thank you so much. Have a great day.